All right, so today I just want to talk about the old turbo. I've been sentenced to the turbo because it's broke the old elbow. Um, and I just thought I'd talk about some of the pros, some of the cons, and is it actually a good use of your time? So I guess there are some obvious like cons in terms of entertainment. Like it's obviously more boring than riding outside, but I think we're not gonna focus on that. I want to focus more on like physiologically, like is the turbo like the perfect place to train or is it not? And I think we'll go through some reasons why it is and why, why it isn't. So I think obviously the main reason why people think it is the perfect place to train is you've got no interruptions, you can pedal all the time. Like there's just no reason not to pedal. So in that sense, you think it should be the perfect training because literally like if someone says to do four hours zone two, you can do four hours zone two with no, like, like no zero pedaling. And if you want to do your efforts, you know, you're not gonna get interrupted on all the rest of it. And then I guess the other reason why people think, I guess that is the main reason why the turbo is so good. I guess maybe the other reason people think it's good is maybe go, people think they can go harder because, you know, like, you know, they have to focus on other things. But I think that's the main, like, aspect. Um, but I think there's also some other things that maybe re it would be good, but I'm not 100% sure um, if it is. So one of the things with the turbo that you'll notice, even on like a high-end turbo, is that the flywheel, which obviously like determines how much momentum you have when you're um, pedaling is obviously nowhere near the speeds you're going. Cause you think like when you're going outside, the actual amount of speed that each pedal stroke adds to the, to your total speed is very limited. Even on a climb, it is very limited. So on a turbo training, even a really good one, you, you put force in positions you wouldn't normally because you just have to pedal over the over the stroke obviously it's better with really good turbo trainers but there's still an effect and I can't tell if this is good or not because you would think oh this would be good because it would tire out your muscles and then you know on the road you put power there but if you look at the best professional cyclists in the world they all pedal with a lot more force on the downstroke than the upstroke because obviously that's when you're most biomechanically efficient because you've got you know your quads are the strongest muscle um, and the biggest muscle, so like that's really where you're gonna get, and also the hamstring as well. You don't really do much power pulling up um, and actually get a rest, which is why doing intervals on the turbo often feels harder, is because you're literally getting less rest. So I'm not, I don't have 100% theory on, on what I think is better. Personally, I think it probably isn't better unless you're gonna train exclusively indoors and race exclusively indoors, then I think obviously it makes more sense. But I think it's an interesting consideration to think that your pedaling style is actually gonna be very different inside versus outside. And that could also you know, be a big effect. I think number two reason why it actually could be good, again, it sort of depends, but heat adaptation, there's a lot of evidence saying that heat adaptation can elicit similar benefits uh, physiologically to altitude. For example, like the more, the more the main benefit is increasing blood plasma volume. And obviously if you've got more blood plasma, then it basically means your blood is a bit thicker. So then it should technically get pumped around faster. I believe that is the main adaptation it takes. And obviously if you're gonna race in the heat, then doing turbo training is really good. But I would say like that's obviously slightly different because you can do heat training, just riding like half an hour radiators on really hot. And that does, apparently similar heat training to doing intervals inside. But I think it's an interesting point. Like if you live in the UK and you're gonna do a really hot race then doing turbo training with no fan and the heating on, is probably something that's actually really useful physiologically, but also just like, like if you're not going to the heat, but if you are going to the heat, then I think it's really useful. Um, I think on the flip side of the turbo training though, I think it's like, I mean, it's obviously soul destroying in my opinion. I, I really dislike, I don't think it's very, like entertaining um, and it definitely feels like cycling feels like a job when you have to do it because you're just like, well, I just go on, I do it. There's no excuses. I just have to whack it out um, and you don't really go anywhere. And I think the previous two things I mentioned mean that you're, the power you actually put out is significantly less. I know other people say it's not, it's like it gets close and maybe it does, but I think there's almost always a difference between them. And then you think like, well, surely it's better to ride outside where, where like let's say I was doing like five by eight intervals I uh, like, and I could do them at 320 inside or 340 outside. Surely doing them at 340 outside is gonna be more physiological, be physiologically beneficial. I'd also say another negative with the turbo is the fact that you don't learn technique. You don't know how to climb out the saddle properly. You don't learn how to sprint properly. And obviously you don't learn how to corner properly either. So in that sense, I think if, you, if you're someone, well, I mean, especially me, I really like riding out the saddle a lot. It's not the same and it feels a bit weird. And I think that's definitely something that like, is not is not great uh, but overall i think obviously it is pretty useful 
especially if you live somewhere where it's really hard to do intervals, especially long steady state intervals. Like if you live somewhere where you can do an hour effort, you're quite rare like to do an hour properly uninterrupted, but obviously on the turbo you can do that. It requires a lot of mental willpower, but then, you know, that is it. Uh, and that maybe that's one point I miss is that the turbo is gonna increase your mental willpower and your psychological game, which maybe is quite useful for me because I feel like I'm quite soft a lot of the time. And by doing turbo, maybe I'll become a little bit harder because on the road, you just grow up. Um, because I think the turbo is like, if you can do three hours on the turbo, that's probably equivalent to like six hours on the road mentally because it's just so dull. So I think it is definitely something to think about as well. Maybe if you think, oh, maybe I'm not that mentally strong, do more turbo. Um, could, could help you on uh, rides outside. But anyway, those are just my thoughts on the turbo. Let me know what you think. Do you, do you prefer it to outside? Um, do you not? And how much turbo do you do? Would you rather ride outside in the pitch black or do the turbo? Because that's often my dilemma and I'd prefer to ride outside in the pitch black than do the turbo. But that is because I am quite turbophobic. But anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.